response uh, from Acts 12. When you get home, you need to read that entire chapter. That's part of my sermon. Uh, I'm going to read for you from chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 15, Acts chapter 4, and verse 15. And then you can read uh, Acts chapter 5. That's a whole lot of reading. You ain't got nothing to do, they ain't got to flip all over. So we look forward to blessing God. Amen. In the fourth chapter of Acts, thank you, Tina, for reminding me about that. Well, I don't care what Tim said about you, I'm right with you. Acts chapter 4. Verse 15. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? But that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in his name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God uh, to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge you. For we cannot but speak yes. the things which we have seen and heard. Yes. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them. Because of the people, all men glorified God for that which was done. For a few minutes, I want to talk from the subject Good trouble. Good trouble. Good trouble. Good trouble. By now you know that the phrase good trouble was coined by a famous American by the name of John Robert Lewis. Congressman Lewis noted for his work in civil rights, noted for his association with, our, with Dr. Martin Luther King. He, he said, uh, we shouldn't avoid trouble as long as it is good trouble. Yeah, 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 yeah good trouble. That, that's, that's, that's unusual. We, you know, we came up during a time when if you had a prison record, you were considered um, tarnished. Uh, I've never been locked up, and I knew the way they raised us. If you've never been to jail or been to prison, you're supposed to be a pretty good person. When you go to prison, you're tarnished. But uh, John Lewis, followed the example of a fellow by the name of Martin Luther King, who went out of their way to get locked up. <laughs> they, they, they went against the rule, they went against the grain. That's a sermon right there, you don't judge people by their past. Don't judge people by uh, whether or not they've been locked up. It's basically the content of your character. So John Lewis, uh, even when his parents were kind of concerned said when he was about to leave and go join Dr. King. My dad was concerned because he knew it was a lot of trouble where he was headed, but he was determined to go because he was into this matter of good trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of quiet. Yeah, I understand. I understand. <laughs> but this matter of good trouble is something that all saints should be aware of. and something that we all should be prepared to involve ourselves in. Yes, yes. 
Good trouble is not an option. It's not something you might get into. Good trouble is something you are required to do when you follow Jesus. Do I have a witness here? I know I can get some arguments on that, so I figure I'd tell up some Bible verses that can kind of give us an example of some people who got in good trouble. Huh. Uh, this, this fellow by the name of Peter came to mind. You remember the passage in Acts 3 when it talks about Peter and John on their way uh, to the temple at the hour of prayer, and they healed the lame man. It is because of that that they find themselves themselves rather in trouble in chapters 4 and 5, standing before the Sanhedrin council because they had done a good deed. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to my first point, which is God trouble. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God the trials will come in your life and will cause you sometimes to get in trouble. You hear me say all the time, God will get you in trouble. Huh. Oh, yes, he will, yes, he will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. good trouble is always caused when you follow the leadership of the master. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Following God will lead you to a point where you find yourself in trouble. And when it to it on, it's going to be something you can see coming. It, it'll sneak up on me that you think you're doing one thing, and the next thing you know, you're accused of something else. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. They healed a man that was lame. And still in gold, have I none but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Well, you know the story. The people were amazed. They were glad to see this man healed. Uh, the same people really didn't have a problem with the miracle. The problem they had was with that name, Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah, trouble, trouble will come. And a lot of times trouble will come because God leads you in trouble. Y'all don't believe me. Uh, it happened for Peter. It happened for Martin King. It happened for John Lewis that they were believing in a call. They were standing up for what was right. And the next thing you know, they're in trouble. Hmm. Why would you get in trouble marching in a non-violent march? Why would you get in trouble trying to do the right thing? Not, not, not looting. You ain't throwing no rocks. You're not carrying no gun. You're going trying to do something with a, with not a whole lot of wrong or violence in mind. And yet, trouble seems to come and knock on your door. Yeah, yeah, that's the case. That's the case that happens. Trouble will find you. A lot of times you will find trouble knocking on your door because there are so many around us in our world who have the wrong motives. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, that you, you hear people upset with the phrase, Black Lives Matter. Why should that upset anybody? Well, it's bad when your motives are not right. It's bad when your heart is not right. Uh, you have people like Donald Trump and people like many of our congresspersons and uh, our politicians who claim to admire somebody like John Lewis, and yet at the same time, they're on the other side and right. Hmm. Something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. When, when you are causing the trouble for the good people, and yet you claim to be on the right side. Yeah, yeah. Something yeah. is wrong when you are a child of God, and you claim to be on God's side, and you cause the trouble for the people of God. Oh, I feel that. Uh -huh. How are you going to say you're a member of God's church, and yet you cause the trouble for God's people? See, you got to be careful when you start trying to hurt folk, because you never know when you're trying to hurt a child of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've heard me say before, when you try to hurt a child of God, you're on the wrong side of the wall. Yeah. You see, because when you hurt a child of God, you're not only going against that person, you'll find yourself having to go against God. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. Generating a manifestation of God's word will put you uh, on the right side of God. That's what Peter and John found themselves. Uh, they were doing it in the name of Jesus. And because they were doing it in the name of Jesus, 
they created some enemies because they were doing it in the name of Jesus, they had a problem. We, 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 we need to understand that when you are serving God at some point in your life, you're going to have a clear example of the misuse of power. That, yes, you're going to see people who are in power, but they use their power in order to accomplish their own goals and desires. That's the problem with the Sanhedrin. They, they were a religious group, but they were a religious group who had political power. And yet, even though they were religious in, 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 in label and they had power, they were misusing their power for their own selfish desires. For a clear, I used to kind of feel bad about it, but you know what? I've been pastoring long enough to know now we got a lot of Sanhedrin right here in our churches. That yeah. There's a lot of little groups who take their own. chapter 4 and 5. That's what happened with Herod in chapter 12. Herod is a king. Herod has been promoted. Herod is now in a political position where he has some prestige in the region. The Roman government respects him, but Herod at the same time wants to earn the respect of the Jews. And so he uses his power out of, out of the nowhere. We really don't know what's the motive. We don't know what was the catalyst, what was the, the premise, what, what, what is that pushed him into it, but for some reason or another, he decides to have John beheaded. And when he took off John's head, he found out it pleased the Jews. That's a sermon right there. Wow. He, he killed one apostle, and when he killed that apostle, it pleased the Jews. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. When, Peter, when, when Paul was persecuting the church, he went after Christians, but he didn't mess too much with the apostles. But Herod decided he was going to kill an apostle uh -huh. and see how it runs. That when he killed the apostle, it pleased the Jews. He killed the preacher and it pleased the church folk. He killed the leader and the Christians got, got kind of. Uh, uh, well, the St. got glad about it. You know, sometimes religious folk are not so religious. They got the label of religion, but they still have the same goals of the world. Who I have a witness here. The St. Hebron, the St. Hebron Council, uh, yes, they had their own motives. Herod had his own motives. But you know what? I found out uh, some people have a problem when you start trying to say, that Jesus was killed by Jews. And Jewish people think you were being kind of uh, picky when you say that. But the fact of the matter is that the same demon was made up of religious Jewish leaders. Mm -hmm. It's been this is a fact that the Roman government didn't want to kill Jesus. I didn't want to kill him. But they were urged, they were pushed by the same that So that Jesus was a Jew himself. So you can't say it's against Jewish people because they were Jewish people trying to kill a Jewish man. I wish they had a witness there. But I don't think Jews are the only ones that are guilty of that. But if you search long enough, you can see some black folk got that problem. Huh. Yeah, yeah, black folk, we talk about, we marching and carrying on because of George getting killed by a white policeman. Well, the fact of the matter is, you know who killed more black people than anybody else? Come on here, somebody. Black people are killed mostly by black people. Yeah. Martin Luther wow. King was assassinated by a white man, and then they want to put up Malcolm X on the same level. But the one thing they keep forgetting, Malcolm X wasn't killed by white folk. Malcolm X was killed by black folks. Black folk. yeah. I'm going to tell you something else. Malcolm X wasn't just killed by Christian people. Malcolm X was killed by Muslims. Y'all better hear me today. This, this matter of people trying to hurt their own is not something new. But you see, the problem is people want to throw a rock and hide their hand, but history tells us the truth will always come out. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You, you can hide it. That which is done in the dark will come to the light. That, why John, John Lewis has a good saying, you need to always be on the right side because when you're in trouble for good, you might get indicted, but the indictment would be a good indictment. Yeah, yeah. Come on here, somebody. They put the spotlight on you for what 
actually do it, but when you do it what's right, all they're doing is helping your cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good trouble ought to be motivated by God trouble. Like God ought to be the one leading you. But not only that, I see something else. Good trouble is always generating turbulence. For Peter, Martin Luther King, and John Lewis desire to please God rather than man generates a turbulence. It generates a trouble for them that, that causes them to find themselves in a mighty bad way. But you see, God gave me five senses to all the use. It's what most people say. You look at this. Peter and John are arrested for doing the right thing. They are beat and told to us. All you need to do is just stop preaching in the name of Jesus. Do what you do, just don't mention that name. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that seemed like pretty good advice. Uh, if you want to stay out of jail, you want to stay out of trouble, just don't talk about Jesus anymore. But Peter said, I got a problem with that. We got a problem with that. He said, uh, you know, that, not, that may not be too difficult for you, but we got a serious problem. Yeah. Now, you judge whether or not you uh, want to please God or not, but, you know, we decided on what we're going to do. We, yeah. we decided it's more expedient for us to please God rather than me. Oh, that's shot the stuff right there. That's shot the stuff right there. And I found out when you decide that you're going to put pleasing God 